Here are five incredible motion graphic techniques that you can use here in After Effects. We'll be using these five concepts to build out this crazy liquid scene like this. However, each of these ideas stand on their own, so be thinking about how you can use these techniques for your future projects. So be sure to drop a like on this video and let's jump into our first technique, which is about creating a melted liquid effect. We're gonna apply the melt effect to a title, but this will work with a logo or any graphic. When you have that logo title or graphic in here, make sure your title is moved up to the top of your composition, select your layer and go to layer pre-compose. We'll call it placeholder and click okay. What we wanna do is set this up to have some color right off the bat. So what we're gonna do is go to effect, generate and grab fill. We'll set our first color to like a nice creamy yellow color like this, click okay. Then we'll take our layer, go to edit duplicate, go to the bottom layer and we'll use our arrow keys here to just kind of move this over. Then you go to the fill effect. We can change this to another color here. I'll set it to blue. And then we'll duplicate one more time, go to the bottom layer and move it over to the other side and also the color to like a scion type blue. Then we'll go to layer, new adjustment layer, put the adjustment layer underneath our first placeholder, and then we'll go to effect, blur and sharpen, and grab a Gaussian blur, and we'll set the blurriness to seven. Then we'll take all of our layers, pre-compose them again. We'll call this melt color and click okay. And this is where we'll create the actual melt effect. So we'll go to effect, transition, and we'll grab CC uh, scale wipe, which is a very fun effect. What we need to do is see that there's a anchor point here in the center. We can move this anchor point uh, right towards the bottom of our title or logo, whatever you're using. Set the direction to maybe about 170 degrees or 180, whatever fits your needs, and come here to the stretch, and we can just bring this down. And then you can adjust the anchor points, and you see how we're kind of starting to stretch our title. Okay, so then what we can do is we can add a keyframe for stretch, hit U on your keyboard to bring up the keyframe and move that keyframe forward in time and set the stretch to zero. So now we'll have this animation like this. The CC scale wipe is one of my favorite effects because you can create some really awesome, you know, transitions in with your titles or graphics. So there's a lot of possibilities just with this one effect. But let's continue with our melt effect by going to effect, distort and grabbing a CC smear. We'll set the radius to about 240. And with the effect selected, we'll have two anchor points. There's one here in the center, and then there's gonna be one over here on the right side. But what we wanna do is kinda of just invert these so we can bring this in, and this will kinda of warp our stretch here inward, and I like that. Then we'll take our effect, we'll duplicate it, and we'll move the anchor points to be at the bottom of our warping effect down here. So go ahead and play this effect and you get a unique look here. And just FYI, you can also apply the liquify effect and turbulent displace if you wish to take this further, but I actually think it's a little bit crazy to do that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take all of our stuff that we've done already and pre-compose this. We'll call this melt done, move all attributes. Click okay. All right, now what we wanna do is take our layer, duplicate it, go to the bottom layer, go to effect, blur and sharpen and grab a CC radial fast blur. We'll set the amount up to 80, set the zoom to uh, brightest, and we'll have an anchor point, and we'll move this over to one side here like this. Then we'll duplicate our layer and move the CC radial fast blur to the other side. And then with the bottom layer selected, let's go to effect, generate, and let's grab fill. We'll set this color to a nice blue color. Click okay. We'll copy the fill and we'll paste it to our middle melt layer. Feel free to change the color by a little bit as well. And now we have a melt effect for our title. So since we technically don't have any sponsors, before we dive deeper into this video, we wanna let you know about our amazing Motion Duck extension packs designed specifically for After Effects and Premiere Pro users. With over 20,000 customizable templates, our Motion Duck extension packs make creating professional grade projects a breeze. Our extension allows you to browse, import, and edit templates right within your project. And to sweeten the deal, we have a 100 free template pack that you can download with the links in the description below. And if you do purchase anything from our website, you will be supporting our YouTube channel, so thank you very much. Creating the melted liquid effect was definitely the longest part of this video, but now we're gonna ramp things up and create an awesome texture for our motion graphics. All right, to create a great texture, what I wanna do is quickly go to layer, new, solid, and we'll make sure the color is set to black, click okay, put underneath everything, and then take all of our layers, Let's do another pre-compose. I'll call it melt final, click okay. So what I'm gonna do is bring in this texture image that I have. You can download the project files just to get it. You can use any texture that you want, but I'll bring it underneath everything. And I'll place this texture above our composition here. And what I'll do is set our track map for our comp here to that image. And I'll make sure it's set to Luma Mat. Just click on it and you'll see this icon. And then we'll get this really cool design. But what I can do is then is take my layer here, the texture layer, duplicate it, bring it underneath everything and turn it back on and now we can see that full texture. However, we can barely see our actual work. So I'm gonna grab the top layer, go to effect, color correction and grab curves. And I'm just going to increase the exposure of this. And you see, as I drag this top point over, 
we can start to kind of see things a little bit better. And then I can also bring up this bottom point and we can just kind of create a curve kind of like this uh, and fine tune it. You know, now we have a really cool texture on everything. We can of course scale up our uh, main work here and just move it around. Another thing I like to do is go to Effect, Distort, and grab a Turbulent Displace, and Alt, click the stopwatch for Evolution, and type in Time, Asterisk 100. And then take this Turbulent Displace, copy it, and paste it to our bottom layer as well. And this will animate our texture and really add a nice level of detail to our work. For our third concept, we're going to be taking advantage of a popular trend right now, which is creating a zoom transition for your motion graphics. To create our zoom, we'll go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and we'll go to Effect, uh, Distort, and we'll grab Transform. And what we'll do is come here to about one second, add a keyframe for scale and rotation, go to the beginning of our timeline, set the scale to 15, and we'll just change the rotation by a little bit. So this will zoom into our scene like this. Now, what I want to do then is make sure our adjustment layer is selected, go to Effect, Stylize, and grab Motion Tile. We'll put the Motion Tile effect above our Transform effect, and we'll increase the output height and the width to fill up our entire composition. And then check on Mirror Edges. And then toggle switch modes and set your motion blur on for your adjustment layer. And now we have a quick in transition for our scene. When you're working on crazy scenes like this, you can't go anywhere without a good glitch effect. So I'm going to show you quickly how to put together an RGB effect. All right, to create a quick RGB effect, it's very easy to do this. We'll grab all of our layers and we'll pre-compose it. And then we'll go to effect channel. We'll grab shift channels. We'll turn off the green, turn off the blue. We'll duplicate our layer, turn the red off, turn green on, back to green. And then we'll duplicate one more time, turn off the green. We'll select the two top layers, toggle switch the modes, set that blend mode to screen. All right, then all we need to do is just hit P on keyboard for position and just kind of offset each of these layers just by a little bit. You can change the X and Y values, and this will create a slight, you know, RGB look on your scene. And one thing you can do is you can all click the stopwatch for any of the position values here and just do a quick like wiggle, open parenthesis. 0.5 comma 5 close parenthesis and this will animate the position just by a little bit and you can copy and paste it to other uh, values and now we have this nice slight rgb effect on our work for our fifth and final concept you have to ensure your scene is not boring and one way to make sure that your scene has a little bit of excitement to it is by adding a camera shake effect so to create the camera shake effect all we'll do is create a new adjustment layer and we'll go to effect stylize we'll grab motion tile again and what we'll do is we'll alt click the stopwatch for tile center and we'll type in the good old wiggle again and open parenthesis 0.5 comma 50 close parenthesis just like this and then make sure you increase the output width by a little bit and the output height and you can check on mirror edges and now we have this nice subtle camera shake effect applied to our project if you haven't already hit that subscribe button as we post multiple videos like this every single week right here on this channel and always be creative